Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. Welcome to the School of Miracles. Lord, I just bring all of us to you this morning. God, you know every issue with every person that is going on in this church. God, we thank you for the healing that is manifested in each of us. Lord, we don't always understand, but just help us to keep our eyes on you, that you are a good God, a loving God, a caring God, and you will bring us forth victorious. Help us to draw near to you, God, in a special way to keep our eyes solely on you, not on any other person but you, because you're the only one that can bring us through this. So we give you glory and honor and praise that the Holy Spirit is alive and real in here this morning. Bring your presence in. Allow the, everyone in here to be touched, to be edified, to be uplifted. And as they leave here today, they'll know that they have been in the presence of God. So we give you glory and honor for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Barb. Next, next Sunday is water baptism morning. Pastor Sam will be doing that. So if you've not been water baptized, you sure need to see Sam. Let's get that took care of. That's the first thing. Nobody, listen, nobody in the Bible ate or slept after they had accepted Christ before they were water baptized. You say, how important is it? I don't know. You have to ask the Lord about that. But it is part of getting into the kingdom of God he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. So we we'll provide that for you next Sunday morning. First thing, right off the bat. So if you'd like to be water baptized, you need to see Pastor Sam. Let's get that took care of as you go forth. Can you say amen? amen. Carolyn, we hope you had a happy, happy, blessed birthday. Do you tell people you're saved? Amen. Why don't you just say, I'm saved. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Say I'm healed. I'm healed. Right now. Right. Blessed be the Lord. Let's open up our Bibles. Let me speak to you out of Romans chapter 5. This is the first verse I'm going to speak to you about. You know, we've been in this business a long time. Since 1960, what, Mark? Eight, seven, eight? 1968, that's a long time, isn't it? For some of you were born. So we've been around, this is not our first rodeo. We've been around for a long time. Of course, during those years, we went through several transitions. We, uh, we were a grace preacher. Say grace preacher. grace preacher. We were a healing preacher. And we were a prosperity preacher. So we've been through several phases of this ministry. And you never know really where you fit in. I've just tried to be faithful to follow the Lord to obey the Lord in all things that he would lead me to do. I go through changes like you go through changes as you grow and mature in the Lord. You're changing. Sometimes those changes are quickly and sometimes those changes are not so quickly. I'd like to open your Bible to Romans chapter 5. This is a verse that you're very familiar with. Romans chapter 5, verse uh, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that's Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace not just grace now. That's what I want to talk to you about today is the gospel of grace. 
Here it's not called grace, it's called the abundance of grace. And uh, I find that most of the time you can just say, you know, well, I'm a grace preacher. But if you add that abundance, people's ears will perk up. And then they're trying to figure out who you really are. You see, the message of grace bothers some people. Do you know that? The first message Jesus preached was a message of grace and a message of healing, mercy. Do you know they tried to kill him? So don't think just because you add grace to your witness, your teaching, that folk are going to like you for that. A lot of people just don't like the message of grace. They don't like grace preachers. And especially if you put abundance of grace in front of them. This is verse 17. I want to read verse 18. Therefore, as by one man, or therefore, as by the offense of one, this is Adam again, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Say, I'm not under condemnation. I never will allow condemnation to come into my life. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification. Would you say, I am righteous? I am righteous. In Christ? In Christ. I've been justified? I've been justified. Just as if I'd never sinned? Just as if I'd never sinned. The next verse, please, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, your Adam is again, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, this is Jesus, shall many be made righteous. That's why I had you to confess. I am righteous. I am righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might be, might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has ringed unto death, even so might grace ring through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you just confess, I have eternal life? I have eternal life. Right now. When you accepted Christ and you came into the family of God, you inherited eternal life. You don't receive eternal life when you die and leave your physical body. You have it now. Before you die, before you leave the physical body, you have eternal life, which is the nature of the Father. Are we okay? So the abundance of grace, people put up a defense when they begin to hear that kind of stuff. The first message Jesus preached, I mean, you remember, how many of you remember that message? In his hometown. You know, they're going to lead him outside the church. And they're going to take him out to the hillside and throw him over head first. But uh, didn't get that far. He pulled one of those God acts. He sort of just disappeared for a few moments and everybody didn't know what happened to him. And uh, he does that still every now and then. He does that for religious purpose. <laughs> To make the religious folks sort of perk up. Where'd he go? But they were going to kill him. How do you kill God? Can you tell me? How can a person kill God? But they were going to try. But how many of you know it failed? They were not able to kill him. But why were they going to kill him? Because of what he said. He said some good stuff. He gave some mercy. He preached about grace. He had some wonderful things for the people of God. But it didn't last long because folks just don't like that grace and mercy stuff. 
Now, my wife, I might got her on that hellfire and brimstone stuff, but uh, <laughs> there are churches around, that's all you hear. Hellfire and brimstone. You stinking sinner. We heard this TV preacher this week. I never did figure out where she was for the devil or for Jesus. She said more about the devil than she did Jesus. Devil, devil, devil. Devil, devil, devil. Why do you want to talk so much about the defeated one? Why do you want to talk about the one that lost the battle? Let's talk about the one that won the battle. His name is Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. So this, this, this first message of Jesus, the Bible said they tried to kill him. Too much grace. It's not good for some, but too much grace is too good for a lot of other people. I remember a professor we had at Gardner Webb. He said, you've got to balance grace with the law. Now, of course you know, we're just word people, just getting into the word real good. But I went home that day, and there's a word that kept coming up. How? How can you balance grace with the law of Moses? And I said, oh Lord. I should have asked that in the class. But see, they call me a fun down mentalist. <laughs> it garden away. I thought that was an honor to be called a fun down mentalist. I didn't know all what that meant, but... Uh, you know, you tell me, if you can figure out how you can balance the law of Moses with the grace of Jesus Christ, I'd like to know. Now, he, he was the professor. He seemed to teach with authority, but I can tell you, he missed it there some way or another. You cannot balance the law and grace. Two different messages all together. Can you say amen? So the moment that you learn to receive the grace of God, that's when you can start ringing in life as a king. Well, we'll go on. I don't believe nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Religion's been working hard. Now, ten years ago, I'd have told you, the devil's working hard. Religion, let me call it religion. Religion is working real hard to prevent people, the believers, from receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Those are a couple of gifts from God. Abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness. Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Which means that I'm a grace preacher. I always have told people, you get in a mess, come to see me. My office. I'll give you grace. Now, if you want judgment, go see Barb. <laughs> She'll send you to hell quicker than God can. What's that? I'm bringing you back if you'll listen. <laughs> okay, she can get you there and get you back. That's a pretty good deal. As long as you can get back. But uh, I guess most of my life, even though I was a fun down mentalist, most of my life I've been a grace preacher. I've given a lot of grace because I had to receive a lot of grace when I came to Jesus Christ. Even though it's controversial. That's why most people today don't talk about that. They just sort of leave it alone. They just sort of backed away from that. But don't just back down from grace just because you've heard that it's controversial. Study the word for yourself. Amen. Study the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is good news. 
Study the gospel for yourself. See what it has to say about grace. And if you're real smart, you'll agree with what the word is saying about grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not if you say it. It's a gift of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? 1973, we moved into the healing ministry. I did not know a fellow would fight you to stay sick. Religion in the church began to call preaching of healing heresy. I didn't know that. I just read the Bible. And I saw what it said about healing. And I saw how Jesus spent two-thirds of his ministry healing. Two-thirds of his ministry healing. Then I said, why does the church fight this? Why does the church call it heresy? When it's really the gospel. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. But see, they sort of sweep this stuff under the carpet. I don't know any church. I know you do, but I don't. I don't know any church that will teach you on the Lord's Day how to get healed and pray for you. I don't know any church in this area that does it. It's controversial. So what? Why do you think they tried to kill Jesus the first time he preached? It's controversial. But who, who builds walls around this stuff? Religion. And you'll have to decide. That religion is pretty hot in this area. And you can always find religious people that'll tell you that if you've got uh, pneumonia, find you a good doctor now. They never mention the healing powers of God, they never mention that Jesus can heal you. That was just for the early church. See, am I sit and listen to you this morning? Uh, why did church move away from the healing Jesus? They lost the power. Hmm? The church didn't have the power. A lot of them weren't even called to preach. You don't have the power, you've got to make up the excuse for why you can't heal people. And the excuse is why you can't heal people. The excuse that they gave people for being sick is you. You're suffering for Jesus. Suffering for Jesus. You see where that came from now? You're suffering for Jesus. They told you that because they couldn't pray for you to be healed. So you got to give them some kind of outlet. That was their outlet. They tell people, well, you know, I'm just suffering for Jesus. You want to argue with that? Go ahead and argue with it. You won't get very far in the church, but anyway, you can argue with it. I'm suffering for Jesus, even though it's not scriptural. Can't find it anywhere. That was his teaching this morning in me and Sunday school class. Some of you men need to get in there. You learn something. I didn't get that kind of teaching in my church. They were still suffering for Jesus. And if they want you to pray for them, they'd say, remember me, Tuesday I'm going in for surgery. It stopped right there. They never prayed for you. You really don't pray for them. You just remember them. Mm-hmm. I was up to the gym 
working out with one of the deputy sheriffs. So he started talking. We began to form a relationship. We were able to identify people. He was a deacon in the Baptist church. And I pastored here. Of course, I've been here for 50 years, 40 years. We're, we're just getting off the bikes. We're getting ready to leave. And he said, Pastor, he said, uh, remember me in prayer. They caught my son with marijuana going to Garden of I said, well, heck, let's pray. So right there in the knowledge, I grabbed his hands and we started praying for his son. And... Uh, when I finished, he said, you know, nobody at church did that for me. He said, I even shared it in the deacons meeting and asked them to pray for me. And said, you know, we dismissed and everybody left and there was nobody there to pray for me. And he said, I can't believe that you did that the first time I told you. You don't know me. You don't know anything about my son, but you joined my hands here publicly in the knot list and prayed for me. And I said, well, praise God. I said, we're having a singing down at the church. What's his name, Jerry? John Starnes. I said, John's going to be at our church. I said, I'd like to give you an invitation to come to hear a man of God sing. He said, you know, I've heard of John Starnes. He said, I'll be there. I said, okay. Well, apparently he got here late. He had to sit up in the balcony. And uh, he had to sit beside of this Pentecostal lady. <laughs> this guy's a deacon in the Baptist church. <laughs> and, uh, you know, John can stir folk up. And the lady beside of him, she really got stirred up. It don't take Pentecostals very long to get stirred up if you got something to stir them with. So, not long after that, he jumped up, sitting in, they were seated up there in those metal chairs. He jumped up and he said, well, you peaching my leg, I'm getting out of here. She said, well, you quicken, I said, you, you, you caused the spirit to die anyway. She said, you, you're killing the spirit. Get out of here. <laughs> so I saw him next week at the Nautilus, and I had to explain to him about that lady that he was sitting beside her. <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, we're different people. We, we tune in to different stuff. First time I heard some Pentecostal sing. I was a deacon myself at Mount Perrin Baptist Church. I didn't know the pastor had a brother that was Church of God. But he came to visit the church and he and his wife sang a song. When she hit that first note on that piano, man, they were gone. I told my wife, I said, my God, who in the world is this? They sing different. Pentecostal people sing different. Because the Holy Ghost is in them. Amen. And they know about the Holy Ghost. They know how to yield to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I've heard other people. You know, I've got this funeral. We were, we were in a Baptist church. And this guy, who's the main music minister there in the Baptist church, sang. Dear Lord. And there was a little guy, I don't know who brought him in there, that pastors down in Cherokee Falls. That little old guy got up there with a guitar and closed his eyes, and there he went. I said, Barb, I said, this guy ain't no Baptist. <laughs> How you know? I said, I know he's not. 
You see, when you're around people, you know that you know that you know. I'd have hated to be in that music minister in that Baptist church and let this guy follow me. It helped me because I was about to share next. And I shared how good I thought he did with that song. And then I shared that he's anointed. There's a lot of difference. The anointing can make the difference. Can you say amen? So the word got around that I was a grace preacher, which was very controversial. Word got around that I was a healing preacher. That I could pray the prayer of faith with you and for you. I'd lay hands on you and get people healed. Word got around on that. I didn't know it was so controversial. I thought everybody prayed for the sick. <laughs> Jesus, two-thirds of his ministry was to the sick. And why would people have a problem with a follower of Jesus Christ praying for the sick? But I found they did. I said, I found they did. And I had some people that I carried a burden for in the Baptist church. And this one lady was a diabetic. I might ought to leave it alone. I prayed for her publicly. And I told her publicly that God wanted to heal her and could help her. Ooh, did she get mad? I'm talking about mad. Years later, I did... Uh, Barb's brother's funeral. We're at the graveside, and I saw this husband coming. I said, Oh God, here he comes. He came up to me and he said, Pastor, I want you to forgive me. I said, uh Oh, for what? He said, I want you to forgive me because of the way I felt towards you for praying for my wife. I said, he said, I was wrong. I should have joined in with you instead of judged you. You understand what I'm saying here? Here's a man now, it took him, what, 20, 25 years later before the light came on. So sometime we judge them too quick. Give them time. And the Lord can minister to them. But it is a controversial thing. It still is a controversial thing. You'll have people ask you, y'all still pray for the sick down there? I had this attorney standing in line with me to get a Sunday meal. Y'all pray for the sick down there, don't you? Oh yeah, we pray for the sick. Y'all clap your hands? Yeah, we clap our hands. Y'all lift your hands? Yeah, we lift our hands. You know, we don't do any of that up here at our church in Shelby. I said, well, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Why you go there? <laughs> so it is a controversial thing. When people find out you speak in tongues and pray for the sick, you automatically overhear. You're on the left, you're on the left, you're on a different side of the fence than they are. That means that they can't accept you as a brother and sister in the Lord. They will not be able to trust you. And they won't like to be around you very much. Because you know something? The Holy Ghost in you makes them uncomfortable. Amen. So the better you can receive that, the better off you'll be. Religion in the church is called the stuff of praying for the sick. Heresy. It's controversial. They don't talk about it. They don't preach about it. Well, you say, yeah, yeah. well, go and see. And come back when you can find one. Had a fellow last week said, I remember you telling me years and years ago, if you can find a better church, go. He said, I've been to all of them. 
and said, I can't find it. I'm coming back. Put my name back on the roll here. <laughs> but you see, it's, it's controversial. Most people don't like controversial things. So what they've done, they've sort of, they've sort of backed off. The Bible said the whole multitude of people sought to touch him, for power went from him and healed them all. That's in Luke chapter 6. Let's, let's just look there a moment, would you please? I think it's Luke 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. He came down with them and stood in the plain. The company of his disciples, a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Nobody does that today. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. That does not happen today. Of course, he could do it here, and there's nobody getting mad at him, I don't think. <laughs> so, I don't have a problem being a healing preacher. I found out there were certain places I could preach that, and there were certain places I could not preach that. And most people don't care. But see if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But the truth can get you in trouble with other people. Can you say amen? amen? Got Jesus killed on a cross. Instead of seeing what God had to say about it, they backed off. Young man was talking to me one time about the healing ministry. I said, have you read what the Bible says about divine healing? Well, I said, have you studied the ministry of Jesus? Did you know that two-thirds of his ministry was to heal the sick? Well, and I said, you wonder why some people would preach that and call themselves a Christian? I said, they're just practicing what Jesus told us to do. Matter of fact, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why would you not want to preach that? Why would you not want to obey that? Well, it's controversial. So what? Why do you think they call me a fun down medalist at Garden Way? I'm questioning things they say and do. I've been like that all my life. I used to talk to my pastor about Sunday school lessons we had. Now I'm burning. Now you know those theologians up in Nashville know more than you do. I said, about what? I said, I'm sure they're smarter than I am. But I said, I tell you what, the difference between them and me is I read the Bible. Right. Amen. See, I don't care how smart you are. If you can't agree with me on the Word of God, we can't agree. That's just it. Right. It's that simple. Jesus healed the sick people. That is his ministry. It was his ministry then, and it is his ministry now. You say, well, I've been sick and he ain't, he ain't healed me. I can't answer that. Maybe you're not one of his favorites. I can't answer that. I can't tell you why some get healed and some don't. I can just tell you that Jesus heals sick people. Amen. And if you're going through stuff, he'll get you through it. Amen. If you're going to have surgery, he'll bring you through. Amen. 
If you're fighting the flu, <clears throat> he'll bring you through. Amen. 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 If you got the right kind of wife to agree and pray for you. She prays for me every night. You ought to thank God for your pastor's wife. You mean y'all pray every day? Yeah, we're Christians. You don't pray every day? And you don't have a lot to talk about. It. <laughs> a healing preacher. The whole multitude sought to touch him. For power went out from him and healed them all. Get that image in you before you get someone to pray for you. Get that image in you. That when Jesus prayed for people, power went out of him, went into their body, and healed them. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He says, in my name. Not in the name of this ministry here. Not in my name. In his name. He says, in my name. They'll lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Why can't you believe that? Just, just believe it. That means you, whatever you go through, you recover. <laughs> how you doing, brother? Well, I'm just recovering. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, how can you say that? Because I had believer lay hands on me. Yep. And the Bible said they shall recover. Yep. One of the things that I stay away from more than anything else is I'm a prosperity preacher. I didn't know it's a heresy. I thought Jesus wanted to prosper people. I didn't know it was a heresy until the church began to tell me that. But, blessed be God, it's not heresy. We bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse and God bless us. I don't remember the last time that I had a financial need that God didn't meet. I can't. I'm in the pulpit. I'm standing before God. And I tell you, all those years, I can't remember a time. Because we're tithers. My wife and I have always been tithers after she taught me that when I first became a Christian. I felt like I could trust God with my finances. Can you? Can you trust Him to meet your need there? And to take care of all of that? See, I just don't understand why people want to fight you to stay sick and poor. I mean, they get hostile about it. And I found out in my home church well, not my home church, the church I pastored for eight years. You had to be careful about praying for the sick. You had to be careful about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I got Louise in a room one day, and she saw me lock it. I locked the door behind us that she couldn't get out. <laughs> Some of you need to get locked up in there, too. <laughs> And we prayed for her that God would baptize her in the Holy Ghost and allow her to speak in tongues. And you know, he did and she did and I did and we did. We had a great time. Amen. It's good stuff. Amen. It's the gospel. I says it's the gospel. Amen. It can be the gospel of grace. Unmerited favor. It can be a gospel of healing. It can be a gospel of prosperity. You see, this stuff of serving God's different. I'm trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell folk for years, it's different. We are different people. We are saved. We've been redeemed. Bless God, the blood of Jesus has cleansed us all our sin. When was that song first? 18 what? 1876 or 86? 1876. A guy wrote that song. Blood of Jesus. Some of those old hymns. 
carry the word, the anointing, the wisdom of God. Amen. That's why I can tell people, I'm forgiven. The blood of Jesus has cleansed me of all sin, past, present, and future. There's not one sin that I'll ever give an account to God for and be judged for. I've been forgiven of that. Can you say amen? amen. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm clothed with his righteousness. God Almighty, it's 15 after 12. We sure don't want the chicken to get cold. <laughs> Grace came as a person. And the person himself was Jesus. That'll cost you $25 in the building for you. Did you get it? Thank God for hearing aids. <laughs> I'll get mine in a few weeks. Don't you say anything about that in front of Barb. Because she'll deal with you about that. The law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that truth is on the side of grace. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? If the devil in religion can keep you under the law, you will stay defeated all your life. You can't have joy under the law. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness cannot be earned by good works. Can only come as a gift. A gift is no longer a gift if you have to work for it. God's gifts to us are unconditional. God sees you clothed with Jesus' righteousness. Begin to see yourself clothed as, that, as such. You are just as righteous as Jesus Christ is. Blessed be the Lord. Under the law, the burden is on you to perform. Under grace, the burden is on what Jesus has done on the cross. The law makes one self-conscious. Always asking, what must I do? Grace makes one Christ conscious, asking, what has Christ done for me? Amen. Blessed be the Lord. So under the law, the burden is on you. Under grace, the burden is upon what Jesus has provided for you. It's our Lord's good pleasure for your family to be blessed, the storehouse to be overflowing, your body to be full of the resurrected life of Jesus Christ, eternal life now. Please stand and give God glory in the house of the Lord. Would you please? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. I see someone has put some hankies up here. Now you want me to blow my nose on these? You want me to pray over these? Some of these are pretty. Father, I lay my hands upon these handkerchiefs to be for what God intended them to be. A healing cloth that the Bible talks about being placed upon people's bodies, demons leaving, and sickness leaving. So by grace, I anoint these hankies this morning. I invoke the name of of Jesus Christ over each and every one of them. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube.